Good morning and welcome to your Farm and Home Show. My name is Joanna Coles and this morning we're visiting with Dr. Ellen Crocker. She's the University of Kentucky Extension Forest Health Specialist there. Good morning, Ellen. Good morning. Well, I'm glad you're here today because we're going to talk and we've kind of been monitoring this for the last several years, but that's laurel wilt disease. Yes, unfortunately we have a new invasive disease in our state that's killing trees and that's laurel wilt. So it's killing sassafras as well as spice bush, which is an understory shrub. So what's the significance of that for people who might not be familiar with that? Yeah, so sassafras is just a great tree. I don't know if you know it, but it's kind of one that you might have learned growing up. It's got that spoon, fork, and mitten kind of leaf shape. Um, it's really aromatic, and it's a great species and a lot of edges kind of colonizing um, old fields and things like that. Um, but this laurel wilt disease is killing it. And the disease is caused by a fungus that's being carried by a small beetle. Both of those are native to Asia. And it first arrived in the United States in the Gulf Coast area. So not on sassafras, but on a different tree in the laurel family. So this disease impacts all the trees in that family. And it was a problem there for many years, but in 2019, we detected it in Southwestern Kentucky. They didn't naturally fly up there. It's probably something that got introduced accidentally. Someone brought some contaminated wood from further south up into our area. And since then, it's been spreading around and killing sassafras. And so it was confirmed in Warren County last year, but now it's kind of spread over a bigger part of the state. It has. It's been detected up into Jefferson County, as well as all the way kind of southwest um, through to Trigg County. And you mentioned that we, we probably bring it in. And is, do you think that's the continuation of the spread is we're moving the beetle or? Very likely people are accidentally moving it around. Uh, you would never know if you had firewood or something that was contaminated with it. These beetles are tiny, like really, really tiny. And it would be so easy to miss those and accidentally carry wood that had it from one place to another. Now the beetles can also fly and so it's going to move on its own, but we don't want to be giving it a lift by moving around firewood. Absolutely. Now, if we have sassafras, mm -hmm. uh, what are some of the symptoms or what are we going to look for? Well, this disease, it gets inside of the tree and basically cuts off its circulation. It strangles it. So you're going to see trees that look like they don't have any water, like they've been experiencing this huge drought. So this time of year, you might start to see leaves looking wilty and dull on your sassafras. Um, you might see trees that have dead leaves on them. A little later in the summer, summer, you'll continue to see that as well as early fall leaf color. So sassafras has these beautiful red and orange colors in the fall, but if you see that in July and August, that's not a beautiful thing. That's a red flag and something that would be of concern that might be laurel wilt disease in your tree. And so what can we do about it? So once it's there, once we're seeing some of these symptoms, um, I'm assuming, is, is there a way to get rid of the beetle so it doesn't spread, or how does that work? Well, one of the problems with laurel wilt disease is that it only takes one beetle to oh, no. spread it around. <laughs> In fact, they think all of our North American outbreak might have been from one beetle, oh. or could have been. And so it's going to be really hard to control. It's a really new thing in our area. So right now we're researching what are some ways to potentially protect individual trees. In the meantime, I think it's all about preventing its spread. Absolutely. And you mentioned like spice bush and sassafras. Those are pretty important to some of our beekeepers as they yeah. serve as some of the early pollinators. They're great species in a lot of ways. And while they're not something that is everywhere, you know, sassafras is about 1% of our trees overall in the state. It's a really important species and a beautiful species and not something we want to see lost. Absolutely. So if people see this, what's their next step? I'd say report it to your county extension office, um, especially if you're in an area where it hasn't been seen before. That's something we want to know about. Where is it right now? Because we're still starting to understand that. Another thing I'd say is that we're on the lookout for trees in areas where all of the other sassafras has died that are still alive. There might be some trees with some genetic resistance to it, and if we can find those, we'd love to get them back out on the landscape. Absolutely, a lot of great information. And if people want more information, you can always contact your local extension office and we can get in touch with Ellen um, and, and get some of this figured out. But be on the lookout. And if you have any questions, we do have a nice publication that you can pick up at the extension office. Thanks for watching and have a great day.